What's up everyone, D-Crack here, and yes, I am back with some new reactions. I'm about to check out a new Mr. Nightmare video. Three true scary social media horror stories like always guys. I'll have a link to the original video down below. Let's go ahead and check it out in three, two, one. Social media horror stories. I was on Instagram browsing through my feed. I saw my best friend Alexis posted a picture of herself sitting by the side of her backyard pool with her friend, so I liked it and planned on leaving a comment. I read through all her other comments first, and at the very bottom, a comment left only a minute ago was from a man with the username Jam00235. It said, you are a very hot little lady. I should mention we're both 16. That's not creepy, is it? I clicked on this it? guy's profile. He appeared to be like 40. Most of his pictures were of landscapes. Some were of varying random objects, like a half-full bottle of beer and some weird stone statue. Most of his pictures had no likes. Some had like one or two likes at most. He only had 15 followers, yet he followed over 100 people, including Alexis. Probably all freaking underage girls. I texted her about girls. the comment and told her she should remove it and block his account. She promptly replied, yeah, I know, it's so creepy. She blocked the account, and I went about liking and commenting on the picture like I originally planned on doing. The next day after school, Alexis and I walked home together since we lived right across the street from each other. On our way home, we noticed a white car driving slowly in the street next to us. Freaking stalker? Was a suspect, so Alexis told me to come to her house with her. Whoever was driving that car slowed down when we got to her house, then sped away as soon as we entered. It was the sketchiest thing we'd ever seen. He wants to know where the hell like she he lives. Followed. I stayed over Lexi's house the rest of the day. We worked on our biology project together. Then we just hung out until late at night since we had no school the next day. It was often that I'd spend the whole day at Lexi's house. This was one of those times. We ordered a pizza since Lexi's parents weren't home. That also meant it was just the two of us in the house, so we were being as loud as we wanted. We heard a knock at the front door of the house. Just slightly though, since we were upstairs in her room. Alexis went downstairs to open the door. But she's a really cautious person, so when I didn't hear her open the front door, I had a feeling she was peeking out the window to make sure it was the pizza guy. I was confused when I heard her no! quietly rushing back up the stairs into her room. She shut the door and looked at me with her mouth wide open, and said there's some creepy guy on her stoop. I didn't believe her, I thought it hell had to be no. the pizza guy. To the no, 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 I went downstairs hell and to the, the no. Window. There was no one on the stoop, though. As she was swearing that she wasn't lying, the doorknob to the back door turned. No! Someone tried pushing the door open, but the lock prevented it. We looked at each other with horrified expressions on our faces and ran back to Yo. the room. She locked the door and sat in fear on her bed. We thought as long as we waited in her room, we'd be okay, and whoever was out there would go away. But something completely unexpected happened next. Alexis screamed and pointed at the window, where a man's head was visible, looking into the room. No! The man was holding a camera no! up to the glass. What made the sight even more horrifying was the fact that we were on the second floor, which meant this man climbed up onto the patio roof. I screamed in horror too as we ran to the basement. Why does Perhaps this guy think he won't get house. caught? We stayed down there the rest of the night until Lexi's parents came home and we told them all about what happened. They were shocked, but really what could anyone do? I went home that night to see a text on my phone from Alexis saying she just looked back at the random man's Instagram account and saw that the person's face matched the person who was at the window. I Yo. looked at it too and agreed. I told her to report the account to the authorities. She didn't know how. Honestly, I didn't either. So I told her to wait until the next day to figure it out. That's just creepy. However, the next day, the account was deleted. Either that or renamed. No one ever saw that man again. But we do keep our Instagram accounts on private now. Yo! Yeah, that's definite. That's pretty darn creepy.
my friends and I have a Snapchat group together, which means when someone sends a picture to the group, everyone gets the picture. There's five of us in the group, Marvin, Glenn, Joe, and Jared. One day at school, Jared told me he lost his phone and didn't have Find My iPhone on, which sucked for him, but oh well, what could we really do about it? Yeah. <laughs> the rest of us continued about our daily lives. I was at the gas station and saw a funny looking guy who looked like he didn't know how to use a gas pump. So I thought it would be funny to sneak a quick video of him and send it to the snap group that I had with my friends. I got home and checked Snapchat and saw the snap was opened. I checked which of my friends opened it and was kind of surprised to see Jared's name under the opened list. I texted Jared asking if he found his phone, but the text never said delivered. I asked all my other friends no! if they'd spoken to Jared about his phone. Joe said he was hanging out with Jared as we spoke. He also said Jared did not find his phone. He put Jared on the phone. So someone else has his over. phone. When I got to Joe's house, he and Jared had already thought to look at the snap map to see that the location had not been turned off. And it said whoever was using Jared's phone last opened it four minutes ago. Its location was an abandoned construction grounds. Ready to go what? kick some ass, or at least thinking we were, we agreed to drive down to the construction site. Getting there was quick and easy. Oh, that's but not sketchy the fence at and all. Navigating in the dark was a different story. According to the snap map, Jared's iPhone was somewhere in a big abandoned building in front of us. The three of us, all above six foot, definitely felt we could get the better of anyone in a fight. But what was this person doing in this not building? Not some freaking serial killer! The situation was just too unsettling. We found a big hole in the wall where we could enter the building. Joe and I used our phone lights to find our way through the building. It was cold and empty in there, besides the rubble and graffiti everywhere, and every little sound created an echo. The last time Snapchat up There's gonna be some, like, serial killer in the ago. building. But the location was right on top of us. It didn't seem like anyone or anything was on the first floor. So we went to the second floor. We found ourselves in a big, empty room. Joe checked the location of Jared's phone one more time, and it appeared that all three of our phones were in the same exact location. Which what? Was weird. Where could his phone be? Unless it's on another level. The sound of a digital camera shutter, accompanied with a blindingly bright flash coming from an adjacent room, made the three of us freeze like a deer in headlights. Then Jared was the first one to run for it, screaming. Joe and I followed suit, running back down the stairs and out the who, hall to the Who outside. was that? Who was it? We got to the car and drove back to Joe's house. On the way back, Joe and I got a Snapchat from Jared's phone. I was the first one to open it, and it was a picture of the three of us standing in that room with the caption, Yo, that's freaking creepy. We never went back to that building for his that's phone. That's freaking creepy. In fact, after that, the location on Jared's phone was turned off. Until, of course, Jared signed in on a different phone. That's freaking creepy. All my friends were telling me to make a Tinder, so I figured, why not? I set up an account and used four of the best pictures of myself I could find. Pretty soon, I was already getting matches. I sent a message to just about everyone who matched me on the first day. Only three responded one of whom was a gorgeous brunette girl who was just so easy to talk to. Everything I said, she had a perfect response to. Even when I said something awkward or regrettable, Let me guess, it's not a brunette girl. Fix it and make Some 50-year-old creepy I said. guy. I quickly got her number. I was a little disappointed to see green text instead of blue text, meaning she didn't also have an iPhone. But we quickly made plans to meet up that same night. She wanted me to come over to her place to hang out. I was okay with that. Yeah, that doesn't sound sketchy it at said all, does it? house was 20 minutes away on my phone. I left around 9 p.m. and pulled up to the address. Apparently it was a small condominium-type building. Honestly, it looks kind of ghetto and sketchy. I texted her to let her know I was there. She replied back quickly, saying the outside door was broken, so I'd have to enter the condo from the front door and knock on the door in the hallway. That's so the sketchy, had a bro. Weird, dreary lighting about them and the doors to the condos looked kind of worn out. It was a tiny place. This is some deep web crap. Freaking gonna torture your ass and put you on the deep web. The door she told me to come to, 
I noticed it was half open. Inside, Someone's... I could see a dark apartment-like room, lit up only by the blue glow of the TV that was on. I knocked on the door, making it open a little more. Dude, get out of there! Making a crack between the door and the door hinges slightly bigger, which allowed me to see someone standing behind the door, with their eye pressed up to the crack, looking at me. It appeared they were waiting Hell for me no. to catch me by surprise and grab me. I figured this out right away, so I pulled the door shut and took the few seconds of time it might buy me to run back out the door I came in and back to my car. I drove home feeling like my heart was yeah, touching my chest creeper. and pulled my back. Some creeper trying to I rape or kill you. that same night and never touched the app since. Yo, that's honestly creepy thinking that someone, anybody could open an account, use a picture of a pretty girl, catch some dude's attention, say let's meet up, have sex or whatever. The dude comes over, the dude's kidnapped. Deep web, torture him. Who knows? Maybe it's a rapist. Maybe it's a cannibal. You don't freaking know. That's that's really creepy. I'd always say when you meet someone for the first time on Tinder or anything, meet in a public place. Walmart, the library. Say, let's meet at McDonald's or somewhere. Let's say, let's go eat somewhere. I'll meet you at this restaurant. Never meet in a private area. At least for the first time until you know that person is who they say they are. But all right, guys, that was three true scary social media horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. I hope you enjoyed this reaction. If you did, please make sure and like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. But until next time, guys, peace.